Welcome to the Monday, May 6th meeting of the Pompelio Design and Review Committee. I will let members and staff introduce themselves. Liz Pritchett. Meredith Crandall, staff. Stephen Everett. Seth Mitchell. Hannah Smith. Unless anybody has anything else to add beforehand, do I hear a motion to approve the agenda? Motion mm -hmm. to approve. So moved. Okay, uh, second. All in favor of the agenda, raise your hand. Agenda is approved. And again, unless anybody has anything to add beforehand, we'll go to the first applicant for 127 Elm Street, Katie Swick and Kirby. Come yes, forward and yes. have you a can seat. Come up and sit at the table. Okay. And you can adjust the microphone as you need to, to be comfortable. And by the way, I didn't mention it for anybody who has not been here, we are advisory to the Development Review Board. Okay. We will listen to the applications and move them forward to the Development Review Board's next meeting. Or, or, or the administrative. Or administrative approval. Yeah. And all, okay. these, all of these okay. tonight are administrative approval. Okay. Okay. So go ahead. Describe your fence. So I um, live at 127 Elm Street, and I'm hoping to put in a 48-inch high um, picket fence picket fence and it's 48 inches because I'm um, registering for a child care and that's the requirement is 48 inches high and um, so from the pictures from my house from my, my yard it's only about 19 feet between the sidewalk and the house um, so the fence is going to run along the fence the front of the house um, and down the side and then back along the river, which will then connect up to my deck, which there's not a picture of in the back. I guess you could see kind of um, from the overview, but so oh. we'll run that all the way around there. Um, I'm hoping it will be a pre-made, like eight foot long sections of a mill, mill picket fence. It will be cedar on spruce and um, yeah, and we will be painting it to match the color of the house, which I brought up, pulled up a picture on my phone, which is a little more accurate than the one on Google. If you, it's kind of a red cedar stain, so we will paint it to match that, the color of the house. After. Quick question, the pre-made picket fence, are the tops of the pickets come to a point or are they rounded? The mill picket one, there's three different kinds. It's not the dog ear, which has a little cut. Um, I think it's the, I think it's like the sort of the point, the little point on there. The like. How old are the kids? How old are the, the kids? Child care. Of the under the ages of five. Oh, okay. Yes. Suggestion, just if the pickets are pointed. Yeah. Round them just for some little. For safety. Mike who decides he's climbing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rounded, okay. <laughs> There's, yeah. <laughs> this is a, uh, it was a case years ago. Yeah. This kid got hurt on a pointed. On a, what? Well, okay. So <laughs> it won't. <laughs> you want to avoid that. Okay. <laughs> Definitely. Other questions? Um, we are so this is just to corral them. Basically, we have a gate also. Yeah, so there will be a gate in front of the two little sidewalks. I don't know if you can see in the picture, there's two little sidewalks. And then I'm going to put a gate next to the driveway. So you'll have three gates. Three gates, yeah. yes. Yep. And, and is the intent to have the kids come to the front? To, yeah, there, no. will there be playing from the front and all the way around at the side? Kind of depends on where the sun is that time as we follow it. Um, there's a little section in the back that they can play. But so, yeah, I won't have and I'm, not too much equipment. I'm I sure keep that it the simple. installer will do it, but when you put the gates up, it's helpful to have a high latch on the outside. Yes. So you have to reach yes. over to Yes, you get have out. to do that. <laughs> yes. Again, for some creative for lines. I have all these <laughs> regulations to follow. <laughs> okay. So. And that is one of them, and the height and touching the ground, um, safety. Yeah. And the, obviously, the finish, the picket side will be on the outside towards the street, right? You're not going to. Yes. You're not going to it. No. And then I put flowers along the edge. 
Did I didn't. Did you guys pass that around? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. I wasn't paying. We just snuck it back. In. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. And it it will be cemented into the ground because it's on the floodplain. The post. Good idea. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um. And is the site relatively flat? Yes. So you're not going to have to step it down? No, it shouldn't. In the back, the ground isn't totally level, but I don't think it will, it will, it should be noticeable at all. No. Mm -hmm. Any other landscaping required? For the child care, there's For the no. fence. For the fence, no. I mean, I'm open to suggestions. I'm hoping, like, I, there will have to be a little bit of a um, right away along the edge. So I was hoping to just put flowers there to kind of offset how that will look if it's set back a little bit. You have all your uh, survey pens in place so you know exactly where it's going? Not exactly. We're, there's still some discussion with the Department of Public Works on yes. exactly where the line where? is in the front. OK, no, I've got the, the side yard. Oh. The side. You have Pens locating side yards for the property boundary between you and your neighbors. No, I've just we've just verbally talked about it, where it's going like a foot away from his. There's a big um, fire where escape the there. He's, there's a fire escape there now. Okay. It's uh, that you. The only reason I was asking is fence. that somebody in our neighborhood installed the fence and it turned out to be two feet on the neighbor's on property. The neighbor. Yeah, no. And had to move the whole thing. Yeah, I don't so plan on doing that. That's a good idea to make sure you're <laughs> exactly the right place. I don't plan on doing that. <laughs> Double check. And again, that has nothing to do with design, but it avoids a lot of aggravation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I did talk to him once, but I'll, I'd like to talk to him again. I think good to clarify that mm -hmm. in writing. Yeah. There's no official pen in place. Yeah. I've had a um, little temporary wire one right there right now kind of testing it out, it's working good. Yeah. So again, our only purview is the design. Yeah, so any it, any suggestions for the design or concerns that you guys have? No. Uh, well, you know, just safety on the top. <laughs> when you're painting it, uh, you're using the, the uh, cedar, the red cedar color, uh, darker shades, show dirt less. <laughs> so if you want to go a shade or two darker, darker. that's fine because it will fade anyway. Okay. And this is a solid state that you're using. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I mean, the picture, it looks like the house actually was in stain a couple of years ago. It is now. Good. Any other questions, comments, suggestions from anyone? What I'll do is there's a set of criteria for each of the applications. And I'll read down through them. Evaluation criteria. Number one, preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure. Acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district. Acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials with other properties. Acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscape and none proposed with this application. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials, acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities. Any additional lighting that needs to be added? Um, no. No, there's, there's lights. Might be a street light nearby. That there, well, yeah, I mean, on that telephone pole, there's a street light. We have oh, okay. one, and then, no, there was already, I think, enough lights on the house. Okay. So none proposed in this application. No. No. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house, acceptable. All in favor of the application as proposed, raise your hand. Something with the spring return on the gate, too, right? Just 
I'm sure that has that's the that's child probably one of the specifications. Mm -hmm. Yes. I have multiple friends and family with child care. So <laughs> yeah. Lots of layers. <laughs> okay. Try to anticipate every exploration. <laughs> so yeah. This will come back to our office, okay. and then Audra will issue the permit out, and you can just come down and talk to us tomorrow about the exact About. Location okay. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with your child care. Thank you very yes. much. Yes. <laughs> The next application is for 73 Main Street. Come have a seat, Tim. <laughs> Welcome back. Yes, thanks. Even the mic's the right height. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good. Describe your windows. The windows. So this is the array over the front doors. Um, and um, it's in Black River Designs offices. Thank you. In, Walking through, looking at some of the renovations, I realized how bad the windows were. <laughs> so um, we're seeking to replace uh, four of them. And then the others are intact, and we'll just put uh, glass, a storm layer inside. So basically, if you look across the bottom, it's the three, what do you call them? Two panes of glass units. Um, and then right above it in the center, there's one arch top. So those are the pieces we're going to re we'd like to replace, and then the ones to the right and the left are fixed and they're fine. We're just going to leave those. Um, and I think the difference is proposed in this application for the arch top up above. Right now, it's a double hung that opens, but because it's an arch top, it only can go up a little bit, and no one's used it in more than decades. So um, I think the proposal is just to have a fixed sash for there. And then for the lower level, um, it, it was Black River's idea was to do casements that would open out. Is that the right term? Awning type? Um, well, it, awning opens from the bottom. They, uh, so it's awning. Opens. No, it's awning. OK. Um, and, and because really, the only one that opens in this group currently is the middle two, and that's a slide over. And they've had an air conditioner in that one of those bays for years, which has been ugly and drift on the front entry, so I'm glad to have that disappearing. Uh, so anyway, that's the proposal, is the three awnings and the one uh, arch top. The one advantage of the arch top on top, if the lower sash, if the arch top is fixed, mm -hmm. and the lower sash can lift, you don't have to lift it all the way up. You can lift it up two inches and tip it in, tip it out, it makes cleaning the oh. windows on either side and up above a lot easier. Okay. We've, we've done that with some pretty good sized magnums where we have mm -hmm. an arch on the top and it's fixed, but it's a lot easier to reach out with your sponge yeah. on a pole and do clean the yeah. upper glass. And thought of that, because up above we have the bigger magnums, but the arch top is actually above the double hungs, but this one it seems to be incorporated in the top portion. I mean, a yeah. fixed is fine, but. Yeah. For maintenance purposes, it's a lot easier to mm -hmm. be able to clean them without having somebody get on a ladder from the outside or right. a long pole, which is hard when you've got the contours in those upper panels. Yeah, it's a good thought. Are you replacing the other glass that's up top, the four pieces that are on the outside? No. No, well, just leave them alone. A single pane? They are. That's why we're going to put a storm sash inside on those, but just a piece of like an old style pillow mm -hmm. with a clip in right. and on the inside. Because yeah. I mean, you're putting in high efficiency windows, mm -hmm. perhaps it will pay self defeating. So yeah. you're handling it from the inside, that will definitely lend itself. Yeah, I think those will be better with the storm inside, but I don't know that it's the benefit of replacing them because they're fixed and they're really tight. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, all the units we're replacing are, some of you can actually see daylight around. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, I'm assuming you're using Marvin. <laughs> we are. <laughs> some of these, I mean, some of these we could have done, done up as low you know, mm -hmm. if you wanted to, as, as a retrofit. The storm works. Might be worth, I mean, you're certainly able to do that, you know, in the permit, it, it's allowable if you choose to, mm -hmm. and you don't have to. 
but when you compare making a clip-in window as opposed to just getting a fixed piece of glass, putting it in and then sealing it up for good, and then you never have any moisture issues between the, the panes of glass. But again, that's you know, your call. Yeah, if you want to approve it that way, we can. We'll give you the option. Yeah, you and the same with one. the top, the hard top. Maybe if we can look into having it be a, a double one. Or where do we go? Right. The proposal right now is is one fixed right. piece. Mm -hmm. If if. So, have the option. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's an expensive little window. <laughs> <laughs> I know we put in some magnums and they're uh, 97 inches tall. Oh gosh! <laughs> I'm glad. Yeah, this is I only hope 50. I never have to replace them again. It's only 52, I think. Because <laughs> that's what we showed last time. So the the SDL that basically oh I see the space bar stainless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you have a bar in the glass. Then you might have to do it the SDL or the exterior. Yeah. In the interior, yes. And really, we've used the same windows. I think we did 70 on the front of the building a number of years ago. It's the yeah. same. Same style. Yes. Yeah. And same that's finish. That's what these are here? Mm hmm Yes. Yeah, nice continuity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really nice that they make an aluminum cladding that's that color. It matches the color that was on the building back when we started. Mm Specifies simulated divided light. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. That's what we're planning to do. Comments, questions, suggestions from anyone about anything else? The two options we said just do you have the option to install a movable lower sash unit for the top center arched window? So you can put one put one of the one in with a movable lower sash, and then you have the option to install insulated glass units in any of the fixed, curved, and arched window units. So again, you can put storms on the inside, and again, that's out of our purview mm -hmm. anyway. But if you choose to get a fixed unit, fixed insulated IG unit, to replace the single pane unit. Your you call. can do it. Okay. It's up to you. And that's any time within the next two years. All right. Under the so you don't have to necessarily do it all right now. Yeah. I think if we do it, we're just going to do it. Yeah. Because yeah. That's yeah. No, it makes sense to have yeah. them up there, get it done, mm -hmm. get out. Right. One less piece of maintenance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. If there are no other comments or questions, I'll go through the criteria. Preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style of the proposed projects in the historic district or involves an historic structure, acceptable. Harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, none in this application. 
Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials. Acceptable. Location and appearance of all utilities. No change in lighting or any other utilities, so yeah. not applicable. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house. Acceptable. All in favor of the application with the options as proposed. Raise your hand. Thanks. Sign that one above my name. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good Sweet. luck yeah. with your ongoing projects on the building. It looks great. Thanks. See you later. Thank you. I'm sorry? Was it the architects did an interior renovation? Uh, they just they live there. Well, they've been there for forever. Oh, yeah, they've been there forever, I know. I just wanted to some of the hallways or something. Should have asked them. Some of them look original. Well, they do. <laughs> but, you know, like just thought maybe they repainted or you know, that sort of thing. Well, they've done, you know, a lot of maintenance. But they, again, they've really retained the way it looks. I mean, yeah. it looks nice. It no, looks it like a it great, does. funky building. Yeah, yeah. I used to go there a lot to Black River. You know? And their offices look great. Obviously, they've done a lot of work inside their offices. Let us know whenever you're ready. Mm -hmm. oh, they changed the username. Okay, Langdon Street Bridge, come forward. And although we know who you are, introduce yourselves oh, for yes. the record. <coughs> Hi, I am Ward Joyce, and this is Twin Win. Twin Win. Would you spell that for us? <coughs> uh, T U Y E N, um, and then N G U Y E N. Thank you. So we're here probably for the last bit of work for Langdon Street. Okay. We won a uh, Vermont arts grant called Animating Infrastructure a year and a half ago. And we have um, been working on developing the piece and hopefully it's gonna go in here in the next three weeks. We've been tasked by the Vermont Arts Council to get it in by the June 5th, um, the two conferences that are coming to town. So we've kind of set a timeline. And so uh, Wynn has um, accelerated, dis twin, sorry, has accelerated design and um, we're coming in to get your approval hopefully for the lighting of the Langton Street Bridge with LED lights. It's a temporary installation. We're hoping that it lasts for three, four, five years. And <coughs> we are um, essentially donating it to the city and we will take it down when the Public Art Commission asks us to. So we're kind of entrusting it to them to determine its longevity. So if it looks great and lasts six or eight years, that's fine. And if two years from now they say, you know, this, this hasn't worked for us, then we'll take it down. How about maintenance? It shouldn't require any maintenance. It's gonna be installed. It can be, I mean, it could be, it could be damaged by someone if they wanted to go at it and, you know, hit it with a hammer kind of thing. It hasn't happened on any of the other work that's been installed in town. We found a general, general respect for everything. Mm -hmm. 
So we're hoping that it'll be fine. Let's say we love it and one of the LED strips fritzes out. Yep. So um, go ahead. Yeah, I think we could just replace it with with another one. But it is um, that specific strip is designed to like if one of the lights goes out, it doesn't ruin the whole strip. So, but still, the one chip will be out. So there's a policy and procedure for that event. Yeah. Yep. The city has. We're still working this out, but the city's offered to collaborate with us on it. They've they've offered to. Um, potentially maintain it with us, but it's a low cost piece, so we'll um, we will maintain it. And it's powered up through PVs, or how is it? No, it's um, we are going to get power hopefully from. I mean, the intention is to get it from Leeds Building. He's already said it's fine, so we've had a commercial electrician there and looked at the lights that power the street. So Andrew and Leeds both pay for the electricity from the from the lights. That's probably not the circuit we'll use. We'll probably go into Leeds basement and pull a new line with a yes. commercial electrician and bring power out. And then that same electrician will design the system to power the lights. So it, it's on a daylight sensor. Yep. Yeah, it would be. But we're prepared to have it go on at dusk and probably go off at something like 11 every night. So it'll be a combination of dusk triggered and appropriately shut off for the neighbors. So we'll talk to the neighbors about it, but um, I don't think we need their permission. Well, actually, no, I'm sorry. That may not be the case because I'm, I'm still thinking about yeah, it being it's, over the it's street. On the beach now, so and it's so not people would look at it. So in reality, it's not going to bother. It's really not going to be in tenants' windows. The last installation was going to hang over the street, and we were pretty aware that the, there are people yeah, sleeping yeah. inside windows. So we had that. It was mm -hmm. a given that we were going to turn it off at a certain time, but. It, it may, we'll see how, how it works. It may go all night. I mean, it's a, I think it could be a strong piece. So can you speak to the piece itself? <laughs> um, so for some reason the connection's not working, but you can show it on the laptop and we just okay. turn it around for them. Sorry about that. That's okay. I, I, do you I, want me to unplug this? Yeah, you can undo that one. That one falls right out. Okay. Um, I think. Let's see. Yeah. So I guess you guys have seen the picture already. Yes. Um, do you want me to just talk about it first a little bit? Whatever so, you like. okay. Um, I'll just pull up this real quick. Yeah, sorry, I don't know why that's not okay. connecting in. And our mm. tech staff is done for the day. Do I make this full screen? Did you make this full screen, Dana? Um, can you just double click into it? I mean, it's pretty good. Most, mm, most of all. I don't know what the format it is. Is it a video or is it a PDF? Oh no, this is just PDF. I was just seeing it. That's right. And um, it'll rotate better that way because that side has the cable that actually locks the laptop. So I think it'll rotate better the other way. So the, um... I'm used to Max. <laughs> Sorry. Just grab my computer. <laughs> uh, if, if it's here, I don't think that's a problem. Um, Cause especially because we're it's not connected okay. to there. So. Um, well, let me just uh, I'll just talk about it real quick. Um, so the lights are going to line the the railing side of the bridge and also the main um, beam or truss. What do you call the top part? The beam of the bridge um, on the the outer parts. And um, so when it's it's motion activated. So whenever anyone gets onto the bridge, it'll trigger their light, the lights to change. So initially, when, when there's no sensor going off, um, the lights will slowly fade between like all of the colors and spectrum, which like ever so slowly. So I guess technically the strips can 
create like 16 million over 16 million colors um, but it's super slow so it's not like flashing mm -hmm. crazy although whenever it gets triggered it's like little it twinkles um, multiple colors um, I have a sample of that here I guess that's what I'll just show you so how many sensors are on that um, I'm proposing um, I guess one on each end uh, so four so mm -hmm. as soon as you get on the bridge from either side, it'll it'll go off. And then as long as the sensor senses you, it'll keep twinkling. But I guess if you go like out of the out of view, um, it'll go back to the fade. So it's, a, it's really on off. Right? Unless you have multiple people walking through, it's it's gonna eventually fade. Right? Yeah, well, I mean, there's also the option of like separating each side too. Um, initially, my other design was like. Um, rows of light so it was going to kind of follow you as you went along but this kind of simplified it and and puts it on just like the whole the whole bridge so there's only like t four rows i guess so did you see it on the water in, in reflection or um did you see it as you're physically walking? yeah you can see it as you're physically walking um especially the on the the bridge part because it's on the pedestrian side um and then the the reason that i like the the point fixing the lights to the bridge is because there are multiple points within the city on different streets where you can see um, the bridge. So you pretty much can see it from like, um, I mentioned um, on Main Street, well you're kind of on Main Street, and then uh, State Street, Elm, and then um, School Street. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, and then with, um, with the reflection in the water, I feel like it kind of doubles the effect too. And I feel like in winter maybe, um, with the snow, it'll kind of like cast some colors down there too. So, the sent picture there representative of reflection yeah. in the water. I was going to show you the the picture on the computer because okay. it's a little bit more clear okay. <laughs> than on the photo. Sorry, get your yeah, yeah. Sorry for the technical difficulties. It's a small group. <laughs> it's nice when we can do that because they can capture it with the camera oh. for the public who's varying from home, but. Did you try, you know, F2, power the monitor or power the well, screen? That's on. It's just looking for the signal from that. Uh, and yeah. normally all you have to do is connect that and be logged in. Okay. But they did a whole reroute of the table oh. and had everything out of place. And so I think maybe somewhere down underneath where there's a whole mass of wires, it didn't connect. And that doesn't, those screws didn't actually do anything because there's okay. no screw holes on that's the side of there. Seeing, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know, I have a feeling the problem is in the well, no. rat's nest under the table, and I don't okay. deal with the <laughs> under the <Yeah>. table. <laughs> I'm not sure that this is that much brighter, but it's a little bit cool. So, I guess I can turn the light off, too. <laughs> so here, um, I'm also kind of putting, I have the images in here where I showed, um, so I may, um, there's also the option of not covering acrylic pieces will be uh, co cover diffusing the light on the outside. Um, but there's also the option of like, you know, how much I cover. Do I cover the whole thing, or maybe I sh expose the bolts where the joints of the um, the bridge meet. Um, and so yeah, so it would be fading. This would be like when it's solidly one color, and then whenever people get on the bridge, it'll start to twinkle. So. Both sides, right? Yeah, on both sides. Yeah. Here's like a sample. Um, it wouldn't be too color. It's the camera's making it look kind of. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. <laughs> yeah. So like, so normally it would be slowly <coughs> fading how it was there at the beginning. So it's going so slow, like you'll have to stand there for a while before you see it change from one color to the next. Um, but then once you get on the bridge, then it'll trigger to twinkle. So when no one's on it, it's a solid color? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so it'll just like slowly fade. So when you're you know, just viewing it from the distance, that's what you'll see. It's just kind of calm. But, but if you stumbled upon it, yeah, you'd, you're likely to find a different color each time? Yeah, so if you're, you know, you're standing there talking, turn around it's one color and then you look at it again later it'll be a different color um, I could change like the, the length of time that I want it, it to be to and I have it kind of on the somewhat slow um, side. 
That's probably better to have it yeah. sort of yeah, a fade in, fade yeah. out, rather than right. a, a but twinkle. But you're also retaining the ability to, to program it after some yeah, time, right? like it's programmable yes. too, so I can actually just do, change the program completely yep. to do any kind of effect that I want. Um, and I also mentioned that, um, you know, for holidays or even special events or whatever, if there's specific, like, colors or, you know, themes that that they're interested in, that's doable also. You can program it to holiday music. <laughs> right. That's a great idea. I mean, the nice thing about having an art commission is that essentially we can say that the art commission can control the piece. And essentially we're, she's, we're doing it with a state art grant, and if the art commission asks us on other people's advice to please do X, Y, or Z to make it more compatible with the city, it can be programmed to adjust. Yeah. And you're talking about an acrylic over this top, the boat arch. Mm -hmm. How, what is the acrylic that's covering that? Is it clear, colored, or? Um, I think I'm going to go with the white one because, so. And those bridge, come in long strips that will be applied? Um, yeah, they, they come in like um I think four by eight ish um, sheet. So then I would just cut it to the size of the the bridge, and it has to be in strips. And then I just kind of connect it, probably with the H. How do you attach thing? the acrylic to the bridge itself? Yeah. Um, well, there. I think there are several options that I'm gonna that I have to kind of explore some more. I would like to s slide it behind the bolts. So the way the bridge is. Um, there are lots of bolts mm -hmm. in it, so I think that I can slide uh, acrylic behind it for it to fit there, um, or I was looking into um, magnets also, so mm -hmm. adhering the magnet to to the, um, the acrylic, and then that attaches to the bridge, because we're trying to minimize any like damage to the bridge, or so mm -hmm. adhering it in as so during the daytime, when you're looking down the river at the bridge, at the at the, the steel and that mm -hmm. arch, it'll it'll look white all the way across. Um, it will be inside it, so so the the black of the bridge will still be framing around it, and that's why I mentioned in the other part here that so if it's sitting behind the bolts, you still get the the bridge kind of outlining acrylic mm -hmm. so it still keeps me things like the character of the bridge um, and then if I leave this part exposed so there are these plates here with with bare bolts there um, I feel like that could help keep the character still too so so you're saying in each span there'll be a piece and then there could be a break at the joint yeah and then the span starts again right I'm so just trying to envision it's what it's gonna look like in white instead of black yeah mm -hmm. Um, but it's kind of like a, um, I don't know if you want to take a look, but when this is hold in the front, hold that panel up against the black, the black. It's still, the black still comes through, because even when, when the light is on at night, you can kind of see the dark behind it a little. Um, that's why I was kind of looking at the clear a little bit too, but, but the light, because the bridge is black, it doesn't reflect the light as much, and it just mm -hmm. absorbs it, so the white, um, works better, but I see what you're thinking is, are you thinking that you... Well, they created the bridge to replicate the historic structure. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm just trying to right. think of how the white's going to make it look for two years, 24-7. Did, did they specifically paint it black for, for that reason? I mean, is there a reason that it was a certain color? Yes. Um, and also, at the moment, there's a lot of graffiti on the bridge. Um, which is why I, w I, I mean, I was kind of interested in the more clear color so that the black could come through, but then unless we can, like, you know, paint the bridge or, or something, those will all still be underneath. Well, the city visible. should be maintaining it and keeping right. it painted black. I mean, it's title. easy to get a spray can and just keep going over any graffiti. Yeah, right. As long as somebody's willing to do that. Yeah. Just a side thought. With the clear versus opaque if you had the clear would you be seeing 
the actual you would, lights more yeah, during the daytime when you don't really want to see not not the not the light of them but the, the strip yeah the, um, the 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 LEDs yeah, when they're not lit during the day uh, you would like the probably wiring be able and to stuff. see some but it's not gonna be it's pretty small and how wide are the strips they're only about that wide it's tape, three right? quarters of an inch so uh, you're not gonna yeah. see that scissors it's a yeah, little you can. triangle I think actually. yeah they're what it's another little triangle. Or are you saying you were going to mount it on a triangle? No. On a oh, oh, you're talking degree. about the, um, the, the light. Oh, that, yeah, on the bridge side. Right. Right. That, uh, that's, it's an angle. Um, right. right. <coughs> Steve, getting back part. to your point, I can see where you'd say, you know, white acrylic all day long. Is that going to look good? And that's why we're, I'm, I'm going to help install it, and I'm, we're right. sensitive to but that that's, concern. That's so that's, I think it'll be crispy and clean and Hopefully it will look like an installation. Right. And then th there should be a tag on it as well. Maybe we can get the Arts Commission to help us with, they're going around finding public art and tagging them for the first time. So maybe what we could do is put a tag on all four starting mm -hmm. points and identify the piece um, as, as a temporary art installation. So if someone yep. looks at it, they kind of get that mm -hmm. the beautiful black bridge has gotten you know, yep. an acrylic installation, which I can, I agree with you, doesn't immediately sound well, like it's going to be pretty when it's off. I guess this photocopy so I, I know it's probably expensive, but they have uh, light-sensitive uh, acrylics that actually change color. Mm. What? <laughs> Twin, isn't it true, too, that the LEDs are strong enough that they would work well during the day? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not against black. <laughs> you mean I thought you said that, that no. there was a good that the lights could be quite nice during the day too. You don't, you don't think they'd be vi visible? I don't think it would be okay. that. Okay, I was gonna suggest right. that maybe we could try having them on Probably not on lunch. the few, few days that we actually have sun. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably keep them on all through November. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to right. write again, like what, what I was trying to emphasize was that the, I'm, I would like to put the strips behind the bolts. So you still get a lot of like the character of the bridge, which I, which I feel is like in mm -hmm. the, the bolts. You know, it's not the the steel part, but that the the plane, the shape of the fasteners. Yeah, and I feel like seeing that that's like where the character of the bridge comes out. I guess you know. So you that will be coming down into the acrylic. <coughs> yeah. If right. you want it clear, you could put diffuse plexi ninety degrees off the face on the inboard side, so that basically it diffuses it and hides it at the same time. Mm -hmm. Um, the m more so, the main point was that I went with the white over the clear, or that I'm choosing that at the moment, is because the bridge is black, it absorbs all the light and it is, doesn't reflect as much onto the, um, the clear as it would on the white. So you don't, at nighttime, you're not going to see as much light yeah, if, if, if you've got clear. the clear. Right. Cause, um, <laughs> because, you know, the more... I mean, I could essentially just put more lights, but the more I put, the more like power it uses, and the more there's a lot more that <laughs> goes into the power. And, yeah, I mean, it's um, well voltage, like so that's probably that's mm -hmm. probably better. It is actually surprising how much it's. What's your what's your mm -hmm. sense of what it's going to cost a year? Um, this is the maximum, though. I mean, it's not that much, but it's. Uh, not, I mean, you're running. It's it. not like you're going to run off a of twenty. Right, but it's not a couple CFLs. It's I don't know literally thousands of mini bulbs. Yeah, I'm not sure how it compares to other LED strips specifically, but this one, the one that I'm using, it's like um, uh, 300 LEDs per five meters, and it uses um, 90. Wait, sorry, 18, 18 watts per meter, so 90 watts per strip. Um, times four. Times what? Times four. Uh, each row is about four, four strips, so it's about 16 strips total. So what do you think the total watt load, well, we've been through this because it varies depending on how it's being activated, well, but... Yeah, here I have about, I use all that, about 300 something a year, but that's, but that's only if the lights are on full bright white, like everything is on, but this is going to be fading through all the different colors, so it's kind of like having one or and a little bit of others on at the same time, so it's, I guess that's more like a third of its, I'm guessing a third of its power once if it's just going from like RGB, the red, red, green, blue, if it's going from, you know, one to the next slowly fading. 
it's not using all of it at once. And then when it's twinkling, you know, when people are on the bridge too, it's not, it's just some of the lights are coming on, it's not all of them at once. So mm -hmm. this is just like the maximum um, estimate of what it would be using if it was just on full bright all the time. Right, so I mean, you could add more lights. But yeah. <laughs> So which one were you talking about for these? It's just that I have to get like more power supplies. That's that's what I was getting at. I have to like get more, um, and then like ha yeah, yeah, and then house them and, and all. Um, I think the w uh, the white. So there's a big price difference between all those two. So like that glossy white one. You want the most expensive. You want the most expensive <laughs> one. <That's laughs> yeah, this is the difference. Like. Six dollars a square foot to like eighteen dollars a square oh, foot, wow. but um, same thickness. Yeah, I think it, it just must have to do with how it was manufactured. So which one now? This um, one? the glossy one there. But if it's a problem, we could go with. I mean, like, because uh, it could be reflective. But the the other ones, that's the cheaper one, the, the glossy the one, and then the most expensive is the. Frosted. The frosted one um, that's probably facing you. Now, if the light's behind mm -hmm. the acrylic, the white's going to reflect it back. I mean, it will diffuse the light that you see, but if mm -hmm. white's reflecting it, it will reflect it back against the bridge as opposed to. Have you thought of using prismatic acrylic, clear acrylic? Because prismatic will scatter the light and make it look larger than it is but at the same time it can be clear so that you'll see black through it there's a prismatic <coughs> panel right there oh maybe you don't want that yeah is that I mean, too, too much yeah i think it's it's yeah. just a series of leds that are performing yeah. an act okay and i think if you diffuse them i think you'd you'd lose the uh well, you're going to diffuse that somewhat through the white. Yeah. yeah. Well, this will be, yeah, it's kind of more a softer glow, I guess, than yeah. going on there. Why Aren't you tired of seeing these lights? Yes. <laughs> Why is no, they look different from a distance, depending yeah. on the light behind them. Great. How is that going to work? That Sorry. white is actually going to be more, like, emanate more light than the Um. Because the clear, it basically just passes through and it's not collecting it or diffusing it for you to see on the surface, um, whereas the white is kind of like col collecting it's it. So, yeah. so for the for the little pinpoints, it's if it's like clear, you would bulb. definitely be pinpoints, whereas on this, mm -hmm. you'd see more of you're a circle. You don't see the filament yeah. through more a frosted so they both, light bulb. I mean, the clear, it will it will kind of show that too, but, but like it won't spread as far. Mm -hmm. I just worry That's about the white, the white again. I mean, the yeah. bridge was I done black, that. specifically architecturally correct. Yep. Yep. I don't think any of those acrylics yeah. are going to blend with the bridge, though. I think I don't think there's. It's ever going to disappear. There's a lot of the bridge you still will see. You know, yeah. It's just the arched part, and then that. Right, and it's only on the, the pedestrian side. So <coughs> you still have on the traffic, the car, the road side is un. So when I said both sides, I meant like um, both sides of the on the right. sidewalk side. Oh, the sidewalk sides. Okay. Right. right. I mean, it is a Cause it's installation. Kind of, yeah, yeah, it's kind it's of like a, it's a temporary, pedestrian. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, temporary. Temporary. it's reversible. Yeah. It'll come out. Um, Thank you. So, can you explain the, the grant itself, just out of curiosity? I just wonder. Yeah. Yeah. Explain yeah, I'll explain that. So it is a animating infrastructure grant. It's one of. Uh, Vermont Art Council's multiple grants. Uh, we got a, a small and inspiring grant three years ago for the project that was kind of a general grant. And this grant is a very specific grant for people around the state of Vermont who are animating the infrastructure of their city or town. So it, it's for anything to do with infrastructure. And so that's how this, this project worked, is it's artistic and it animates an element of our city infrastructure. And I was just talking with the administrator of the grant two days ago, and she was really excited about this because um, <coughs> there's 
conversation about possibly lighting more bridges in Montpelier as a, an expressive way of distinguishing our town. The Arts Commission has talked about it. And so it, it, it's an opportunity. The animating infrastructure grant is not big, but it's big enough to do something that's significant. And the hope is that this will inspire perhaps some other work. Well, well there's going to be a pedestrian bridge going to Confluence, right? Confluence <coughs> Park. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So okay. I mean, there's that one. That would make sense. And then the bridge that takes you between DMV and the high school mm -hmm. has already got lights on it. Mm -hmm. Someone I know installed. <laughs> so that's not <known> as me. <laughs> they go on at dusk. Um, and then, of course, there's the pocket park across the street installed by someone I know. Mm -hmm. And those go on at dusk and go off at dawn. And the police love it. They say it's great because all of a sudden the pocket park's purely visible. And it's a you know, comfortable place to sit at midnight. And it just lights up, animates, uh, otherwise empty lot. So night lighting has proven to be beneficial and kind of have civic charm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so it's kind of a theme we've been pursuing. And this is the first one that's color and motion. And I'm pretty excited about it. What are the Thank you. what are the strip options housing oh, options? Um, so that was for the um, so the sidewalk um, side. Um, there are different shapes, I guess, of, of the aluminum enclosure that they could sit in. Uh, but I'm going to go with that uh, the angel one. So so when you're on the bridge walking, this arched one here, right. So when you're on and the bridge, it'll be visible. When you're the pedestrian, it's it's kind of um, like this. So when you're walking mm -hmm. here, you can see it here. But people on um, State Street or School Street can also see <coughs> it pointing outward. Instead of just pointing straight out. Right, instead of pointing just straight out or straight up. Mm -hmm. so it's kind now of that will be for the lighting. Except for this lighting here. Yes. So for, for down here. And okay. then also like the, what I imagined um, uh, having it down there, when people walk across the bridge, the lights are kind of underfoot as they're walking across. So I guess like once they trigger it, it'll kind of be twinkling under. <laughs> well, especially if you're on say State Street Bridge, looking that way, right. and you see people walking, it's gonna yeah. look like they're walking like they're on the lights. On, um, yeah, that would be intentional. Now are those on the sidewalk or are they actually um, Attached under on the side of the rails here. On the um, on the s beside the sidewalk, so like I guess like yeah. the concrete. There's um, steel right there, but um, so yeah, ag here? against that. This one here. Yeah, so it'll be like. So it'll right? be against the curb. So yeah, against the <coughs> kind yeah. of like flush with the, the sidewalk underneath the railing. That way, like w in winter when there's plowing <coughs> and snow, it won't get bumped. I guess it'll just get so it'll just go off of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's on the inside of the railing. Um, that was just yeah. I just the showed it there. It's that's just a. I'm just side. trying yeah. to just figure out. But the, the, yeah, I mean, it's on the outside. There's one thing from. It. Yeah, like there's a difference between a concept yeah. drawing and a yeah. detailed yeah, drawing. Oh, no, no, I so so yeah. We're not, it's not 100% detailed. Yeah. <laughs> We're still working on it. Yeah. Yeah. So it right. can come up. Yep. <laughs> well, we're going to seal it to keep, um, to keep the uh, water from getting in okay. and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think the aluminum, aluminum, um, Had you thought of doing that same strip underneath the upper ledge on the steel mm -hmm. instead of the whole panel, whole white panel that's filling that space? Have you thought about doing that curved <coughs> underneath, or that doesn't give so you? So the underside of the flange, so it's yes, flange, where the web flange. So just just the. Where the, you got the top, and then there's a, there's a flange on top, and then you've got your actual steel here, right. and doing something underneath underneath the flange, that to do away with the flexing, mm -hmm. and do away with the the full sheet of acrylic that covers the whole beam. 
I know it probably doesn't give you the effect you were looking for. I mean, it um, it will just be a smaller, thinner effect, like what's underfoot. If I if it that's what's done, but then with the plexi, it just makes it just kind of highlights the bridge. <coughs> so do you think the plexi is going to be kind of like a screen, and it essentially you'll be watching a screen change colors as opposed to yeah, as opposed to just a strip. there be room between the flange and the bolts that are along the top and bottom to do that? Yeah, it'd be this, it'd be, it's but the same. I mean, you could do it. Yeah. Again, I showed that like yeah. that, but you could do a, if this was the flange and this was the steel, you could do a longer, and then your light strip would be mounted up, up above, mm -hmm. but I'm not sure what the overhang is on that steel. I'm just concerned that it was a million dollars spent to make that bridge, build that bridge, and paint it black. Yeah. Well, it'll come and for back. two years, those uh, white panels will be covering <coughs> that. But it'll be there for. I mean, the bridge is going to be there forever. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. <laughs> no, but it is. That, we, that we do cool. totally understand your concern that the installation doesn't. I'm just trying to be respectful of the yeah. of the effort of, <coughs> that went into recreating a bridge. I mean, they could have built a bridge without without the without the uh, the old style steel structure. Well, to counter that, we're actually <coughs> doing an extraordinary job to highlight the structure of the bridge yeah. at night. And actually, yeah, while it may <laughs> slightly <laughs> alter its view during the day, it's going to come alive in a way that it never has. <laughs> and then we'll all be a judge. Good thing Eric's not here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good thing. No, I don't think Eric will. I mean, you really see the character of the bridge. It's, it's not really obscuring it very much. The, I, yeah, I, I all understand the what you're saying. I do appreciate that. But, um, no, I mean, at just. At least in my opinion, I think it's, um, you know, it still looks like a historic bridge. I mean, it's like, the, I don't know. The webs or the, the beams are not the other are ones. still going to be black. Right, the, the trusses are still going to be there. Yeah, yeah these inner, inner Christo wrapped whole buildings. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Christo. <laughs> you know? In orange, yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, those were exciting. This only lasted a few days. <laughs> That's true. Um, which is very interesting. I think lasting a couple years is a stronger statement. But so um, we haven't fully detailed these things. And part of the reason that I'm engaged with the project is I'm helping. And I will um, work, continue to work with this detail to do our very best to make the bridge look good and to make the installation look really snappy and clean and be durable. Um, with Again, our concern is respectful of the historic significance of the, and appearance yep. of the bridge. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Are you planning on doing any mock-ups to look at, or you just going to go for it? In what, sorry? Mock-ups. You, you, did you say on CAD? Or is that what you said? No, just, no, or just look at oh. physical mock-ups. Yeah, I um, I went to the plastic shop recently and got a small strip though that I'll slide behind the bridge. So yeah, I think I can get some. I've been doing just like because I have the lights set up within my studio and I just had the small strips, but I haven't um, done a large uh, version yet like to see one yeah. panel on the bridge from State Street. So uh, put, put one up and have, get a picture from State Street of what it's going to look like during the daytime with the white up there? Yeah, I think that would be helpful. At least that would be a good start to... Would it make sense to... Well, I guess just the the of the panel of their choice, their preferred panel color. Instead what of making them buy multiple oh, yeah. long strips. No. Preferred just panel color. I think Steve would like to see our preferred yes, mock-up. I'd like to see your preferred mock-up. I'd like to see it done in full, done in 3D. Yep. Of like just one of the sections or? or just yeah. a small yeah. section. Yeah, like a couple feet. Okay. 
So how do we keep the process flowing if we're trying to install by literally the end of this month? How do we come back to you and get approval? It's right. got to, it's what's, we've, what's everybody else's opinion? I mean, I'm just one of four people. <coughs> yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. Um, like I would it. like to see the lockup. Like mm -hmm. I think it's temporary. Um, How quickly can you generate a mockup? That's on her. Um, <laughs> I think it's doable. I mean, I. It's just that I can't. Um, like, you want a photo, like to send you a video to share a video, or because I can't like leave it out there. Yeah, it would. You would have to do a mock up and take pictures and right. video, and then come back for the next hearing, which would be in two weeks. If they if we if they go that route, if they vote to go that route. Uh, what would guess, you like uh, to do? I just guess give them. I'm fine with approving it now, okay. but uh, it would be nice to to have a little bit more say if I can see a mock-up. Would you all like to be invited to to view it with us? Sure. have input on it visually? And so approve it now, but let's say that we'll invite you for a view of the mock-up and the ability to critique it with us. And If they <laughs> give other recommendations, they have to vote on them at the next hearing. We can't issue, if they have other input, yeah. We won't be able to put it in the permit. I'm proposing they don't have further input, okay. but that they come <laughs> and, and No, I'm just suggesting yeah. that is, mm -hmm. I'm hearing it suggested that mm -hmm. it would be nice to approve it and also nice to give you all the ability to look at it. And, you know, uh, I don't know if you have, then have the power to retract your approval if you need that or. But it'd be based on one of these yeah. samples, right? Right. Yeah. So can't we approve Yeah, if you're yeah. good with, yeah, if you're good with that and <coughs> you're good with not having further input on the <coughs> permit, but having. No, I think the idea yeah. is solid. Cool. Just, yeah. yeah. But she wants to use the white. Are, would you be okay with the white? I'm okay with the white. Okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, I personally wouldn't mind seeing it done in white and buffed to, for me to be able to see it too. I mean, we're, we're still working out the best solution and so it might be worthwhile to see a couple finishes yeah. and to be able to compare them and if, you know, we can do this at five o'clock in the evening and three of the four of you can come down for 15 minutes and share your opinion, that, that would be, certainly would be happy to do that. As long as the permit recommendation gives options for the colors, then you guys would be able to go with whatever right. the so conclusion was. So we list yep. those. You're, you guys vote on what you want to do. <laughs> as long as it's, as long as it's something that, this is something that I can put in for permit conditions and make it work so that whatever they end up doing works. I'm good. So how would you like to word that? Let's just include the, whatever the names of the samples are. One, the one of. Or one of the four samples. Do you have to keep these? Well, actually I don't want to, yeah, put no. the names because I don't want to put them in the file. <coughs> it's just a pain. Your from, I like that from too. yeah, from what I've seen of it in front of the light, right. with the light. Yeah. yeah. I don't have a vote. I like the softer effect personally. Mm -hmm. So the white. Yeah, too. I like that softer effect. Mm -hmm. I think that'll be of, good. Of the white, not yeah. the buffed. Um, well, she just means that. I that just mean versus the clear. Right. Okay. Yeah. Just to have a softer yeah. effect. What whatever ends up g giving a softer effect to the light, so mm -hmm. it's not so much like you're seeing bulbs through it. Yeah. But you're seeing the glow. Right. I think is a nice. And you know the, the white will accentuate the flange. Yeah, that's and, kind of and the, the bulbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah like the crispness of crisp. It's gonna make it crisper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah, it's kind of like a backdrop for the uh -huh. the bulbs because they're really prominent. They're like five eighths inch <coughs> um, deep or tall. Mm -hmm. the, the head of the bulbs. So it would draw people's attention to the bulbs more mm -hmm. than if they weren't there. Yeah. If they were then all the same color right. black. I mean, that's just like mm -hmm. you know, it's so hard it's to tell how far out that flange goes because the whole thing is black. See the construction. Yeah, the construction <laughs> stand out a little more. Mm -hmm. right. What were you saying, Hannah? Just uh, the having the bolt prints as well. I think that too. Because yeah. it also, again, emphasizes like, the construction of the bridge, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even though it's not a continuous yeah, length to it. Yeah, it takes from the continuity and gives a little bit back mm -hmm. a view mm -hmm. of the bridge. I think that makes sense too. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's obviously a 
Yeah, because I do like enjoy respecting what is there, uh -huh. <laughs> what's existing, and kind of playing with what is the, the site and um, taking that into account before drawing something on. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, is light your medium or? Um, site specific installations, <laughs> I guess. So, usually, I kind of um, common materials. Um, I work with thread and mm -hmm. wax paper and plastic bags. <laughs> so, it's a mixture of things. I'm looking forward to seeing this, however, it ends up. <laughs> time on that bridge as a kid and a teenager so oh, you did. Yeah. <laughs> oh one thing I think I didn't mention in here um, but that bridge the trusses they kind of lend themselves well to benches also mm -hmm. oh, yeah. and that's like a spot where mm. people people always walk on but there's nowhere to sit mm. so potentially there could come, be a come back with some bench ideas yeah. Did, that uh, would be some somewhere. landscaping on the bridge at one point, right? It's still there. Yeah, we just, um, it could be the last year the beds are kind of <laughs> looking a little tenuous. But uh, Montpelier Alive just gave us uh, $750 to plant it this year. I just applied for a grant from them. I, the people who do it just do it as volunteers, and, and Montpelier Alive hasn't watered them, so we've actually, we've actually installed and watered the bridge like three summers in a row just as volunteers. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna, I think we're going to do it this one more year, and then probably the beds will start falling apart. They were, you know, this Langley Street Alive is kind of a sh tactical urbanism. Nothing we built there was permanent, so I've taken down multiple pieces. The big landscape painting came down last fall, and um, what else? I was just encouraged to scrape one of John Snell's photographs off that's mm -hmm. starting to it's mm -hmm. actually there's only two there's two that are really nice um, up there and then there's one left but like 20 all fell down so part of doing this is actually being responsible for taking care of it and taking it down so the parklet the seating area at Onion River Sports is looking a little bit run down and I'd like to get Kit to maybe paint that this year so that's the challenge with public art it's easy enough to put up and it's hard to maintain so you gotta, you know, you gotta do your I'm committed to not letting things look bad, right. but it does take some some effort. So what I did, I said the applicant has the option to choose one of the four acrylate panel colors, the white, the GP, P95, the satin ice, or the satin ice white, which both give the desired artistic effect and at the same time respecting the historic characteristic components of the steel bridge. And again, there's a evaluation criteria that says preservation or reconstruction of the appropriate historic style. And I said that would be acceptable only because it's temporary and changeable mm -hmm. in case there's a lot of objection. Mm -hmm. Good. For the, again, not the way it looks at night, but the way it looks during the day. Right. Yep. I mean, you know, all these, all these perspectives that you're showing here, that was painted black for a reason, so again, trying to preserve that at the yep. same time. Yep. Criteria number two, harmony of exterior design with other properties in the district. We'll call it acceptable with other, compatible with other artistic installations. Compatibility of proposed exterior materials, acceptable. Compatibility of proposed landscaping, not applied for. Prevention of the use of incompatible designs, buildings, color schemes, or exterior materials. Probably, <laughs> depending. Exceptional. Location and appearance of all utilities. <clears throat> Again, acceptable. The lighting's not the issue, it's the panels. Recognition of and respect for view quarters and significant vistas, including gateway views of the city and state house. Again, acceptable. Again, temporary and cha changeable. All in favor of the application with those options, raise your hand. Was that a raise? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> had to tease a little bit. Yes. <laughs> well, thanks for working yeah, with us you. on this. Really appreciate it. We really cool. always enjoy working. Again, with I'm all for the artistic. Yeah. But again, we really try to protect the yep. artistic. I mean, there was a lot of money spent on design and building that thing. Absolutely. Point taken, and we will detail it as carefully as we can. And would would you all like to be invited to a mock-up? I would like to see it. Okay. Could you include me too? Just sure. Like That'd be great. It, and no, if I, I can, I will. I think it's very appropriate. So this goes to us, or does it just get to you? You just need it. to sign that up. And then give it back to me. There. Okay. And then we'll be able to um, issue mm. the permit. And then how do we invite this committee? Um, we tell her she can. Tell me. You can send it me and Audra, and we'll circulate it. Okay. And if we have a day or two notice, that'd be great. Yeah. I think it ideally happens later this week on the time schedule we're on. So twin, it's all on you, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have <help. laughs> um. it's gotta be ASAP, whatever that means. We have like three weeks to put it up, right? I'm also installing an installation at a spa. I don't wanna hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> Do not even want to hear about so. it. I've also got twelve projects, so we've all got we all, we're all busy. We'll yeah. get it done. It's gotta be done. We've been told it's gotta oh, be in by the so conferences. Yeah, I'll have to go get uh, one of these though because yep. I have a I have a P95. That's the one that I that he gave me. And one other thing, out. just to m mention, it might be when you if you do whatever you end up doing, if you're putting acrylic panels in there that go down to the bottom, it might be a good idea to to, to notch those for weep holes because if <laughs> it's raining and it's driving yeah. it from one direction, that rain's going to push in behind the acrylic yep. panel yep. and drown all your lights. Good thinking. Mm -hmm. So we pull so that whatever's in there can drain out, and hopefully that the strips are waterproof enough to yeah. take some moisture and yep. s a beating. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, they're housed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> anybody had a chance to look at the meeting minutes from April 15th? Uh, see. Oh, Nobody's here. Yeah. Uh, so it. we'll table we'll that. Okay. And if there's no other business, our next meeting is Monday, May the 20th. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor of adjournment, raise your hand. Meeting is adjourned.